This is really awesome to say, but I'm in a room at, in Brighton with Ralph from Edge Shikari. This is just incredible. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for coming down. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been going like for a very long time now, mm. over a decade as Edge Shikari. Did you think when when Sorry You're Not a Winner first came out that you would be still here in like 10, 12 years' time because so many bands have fallen off the face of the earth? Yeah, we've... We've watched bands that I think are much more talented than we are. Um, maybe even more creative, just, you know, fall by the wayside and throughout our whole career. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, I think there's a lot of luck involved. Like, in general, successful people, well, however you define success, but let's not get into that. It's a, <laughs> it's a long <laughs> philosophical pathway. But, like, those types of people normally play down the part that luck plays and yeah. I think it, it plays a, a very big part um, but yeah I don't know I think we're, we're so focused and we're willing to put you know every ounce of effort into everything we do so I think that obviously helps yeah so obviously we're here on your tour how's it been going so far it's been going good yeah this is the fifth show just had a was it a day off yesterday no no we did Manchester yesterday so <laughs> it was a day off before that and it's a day off tomorrow so yeah. this is sort of the the middle of the tour, kind of, it's, everything's settled now. Yeah. And we're into into the groove. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's going really well. So this is in support of the Spark, which yeah. is just an incredible album. <laughs> like I, the, when I first listened to it for the first time, I just went, "This is mind melting, meltingly good." Thank you. You are, I think, one of the one of the very few bands that are just really not afraid to push yourselves. Mm. Like if you look back through every single album you've released. I think you've pushed yourself on the boundaries of what you can achieve every single time. Yeah. More than what a lot of bands do. What kind of drives you to do that? Because if you look, you know, take the sites and compare it to, you know, say something like, sorry, you're not a winner. The, the, they are vastly different, but mm. also there is that consistency of your sound as well. So what do you think yeah. is the main motive or, you know, your main structure behind that? I'm not really sure. It's hard for me to explain because it's so innate and so normal to, yeah. to what we do. Um, for me, if I, if I was you know told that I had to write the same, basically the same album over and yeah, over yeah. again, I'd just I'd just be so bored. I, I would, it wouldn't be honest. It wouldn't be genuine, like emotion and music and an outpouring of one's soul. Like, <laughs> so I, yeah, for for us, it's just what we do. Like I'm I'm quite fidgety as, as a person, like yeah. creatively. So I just like to know that I'm always pushing myself, and we're always. Are progressing as a band like a lot of our musical heroes as well of you know it, it, it's the progressive nature that we re really respect and we're inspired by whether it's going way back to like david bowie or like radiohead um so it, it i think it's just something that's really important yeah to, to us. especially those two artists you just mentioned are, are two artists that have definitely pushed the envelope of mm. what they can achieve in their own uh, aspects as well so like i said we're here for the album the spark what was the main kind of concept behind that? Because it seems very just like you know, listen to the sites. You know, everything is very the space, the the whole universe. Was that kind of like the writing point, the focus of the album, or is just everything at once? In yeah, it, this was a difficult album to sort of make. You know, one overriding theme or context for it all because there was just so much going on. Like, started writing it in 2015, and that was what I've sort of dubbed as. The, my year of hell like personally it was just yeah. horrible um, and you know that was about the time that Brexit was happening Trump was happening and there was yeah so there was just all this shit going on and so it was it was very difficult to, to work out how I was going to put this into art and, and create something that's, that was interesting and an interesting perspective because I think it's easy to go you know everyone sort of expected us to make a, a fuck Trump you know yeah. political statement album and it's, we need a lot of that, of course, but we've kind of done that. Yeah. Like, not specifically to him, but, you know, that that's that's stuff that we've been making. So I wanted to sort of take a step back um, and see what interesting perspective I could offer. And I think it wasn't until I sort of started to marry what was going on in my personal life to the, the political. So this album, I think, really is all about being unafraid to show vulnerability, like human yeah. vulnerability, because, you know, as as a species, we are quite vulnerable. Um, and I think the reason why we have people like Donald Trump, for instance, is in the world is, is because he has been told to 
to not show his vulnerabilities, yeah. to keep his emotions in. And, you know, he, he's only really allowed to show anger. It's that man up mentality. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's dangerous. That just creates someone who's just full of pride um, and full of anger. And that's, you know, a big reason why the world is so fucked up. So <laughs> I wanted to make an album that was just like, just unafraid and just like doing our little bit to yeah, try yeah. and swing that, that balance. You saw this earlier when we were getting ready. We have some chocolate up for grabs because I always like to play a game. So I have to have a prize because otherwise it's not a game. It's just me taunting people, right. which is a little bit unfair. Yeah, yeah. Um, the game is called, these are your songs, surely you know them, which is the worst title. Well, I just proved that I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how this, this pans out. Basically what I've done is I've tried to create a paragraph using your song titles and put them into some sort of cohesive way, but it never comes out that way. And then you just have to work out the number of your own songs that are in this. Okay. It, it, simple. All right, sure. All, right. So all, you got, <laughs> all you got to do is count up when you hear your song titles. That's right, okay. So, well, that, so if it's a title, that'll be fine. Yeah. Be fine. I think it's time we live outside, as I feel I've lost the rat race, and we know, and I will not get no sleep tonight. The sights make me feel that warm smiles do not make you welcome here. Anything can happen in the next half an hour, so I'm going to take my country back after this redshift and juggernauts have passed. The flash flood of colour makes me believe that I won't be saying when this is done that, sorry, you're not a winner. Eleven? Oh, uh, no! What? You've got the red herring. Because there's, so- there's ten tracks and one album title. Uh, uh, got the, but, bloody hell. But I, I think that's, that's deserving of the, of the, of the win. I mean, <laughs> Thank you, mate. I, I was going to give them to you anyway, because otherwise right. I'm just going to sit there and eat them myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need that. <laughs> awesome. Cheers. No, no, that'll um, <laughs> be a bit of energy before the show. Yeah. So like I said, we're here. We're on tour. Um, you said you're halfway through. What's next for you guys? I'm guessing you've got more cycles planned for states maybe around Europe Mm. and then obviously festivals next year maybe yeah all of the above Uh, America in January February Australia after that yeah European festival circuit which I can't wait for that's my that's my favourite thing about this job (laughs) doing festivals all around Europe yeah Um, it's going to be a silly busy so that's 2018 mapped out yeah already it's quite incredible that you can live you it's scary, it, yeah. man. Yeah, there's even like just starting to, to talk about. So, what we're going to do early 2019? It's like, oh my <laughs> god, no! Wow. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing next week after time. <laughs> yeah. Well, neither do I either. Like, <laughs> it all just goes in one ear and out the other. Right. Because I had to endure when I was having my dinner Christmas songs. Oh, really random. Note, when is it acceptable to play Christmas music? Oh, this is actually an ongoing discussion with our crew at the moment because we've all we've kind of already redubbed this tour the Christmas market tour because we've been to four Christmas markets and we've only been to five cities so that's pretty good going already <laughs> yeah, that's a high average but then you think Leah, what are we now what's the date 22nd of November see I always thought you kind of have to wait till December starts to do that business but yep. that's what I would have normally said but then I've been frequenting Christmas markets <laughs> so I love Christmas so yeah I like I actually recently found out that you can drink uh, that mulled wine is a traditional drink for bonfire night and Guy Fawkes and all that. I didn't know that. So that's, no, yeah. that's a whole extra month I could be drinking mulled <laughs> wine every year of my life. I've been missing out like a mug. Right. So, yeah. I'm really looking forward to tonight because I've never seen you guys live. Like all the times you've played Ports of Loads and I've missed you and Southampton. I've missed you every time. So tonight I'm really looking forward to it. Wicked. Yeah, it's going to be fun, man. And, uh, Thank you very much for your time as well. Oh, good. It's been Thanks awesome. For coming. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.